Hey guys, I just wanted to preface this video with the fact that I recorded pretty much all the video like this instead of this. So I hope that doesn't bother you too much. Second thing is, I'm really excited to do this build series. I've spent a lot of time researching all sorts of different aspects, you know, that are involved with completing a project like this. And I have an engineering background, and there's actually a fair bit of math involved in order to get the right balance between the power of the battery and what the motor was capable of, and actually, you know, theoretically calculating what the performance of the bike was going to be, you know, like acceleration and top speed and things like that. And so if you guys are interested and, you know, enough people comment and say that they'd like to see it, I'm happy to do a full rundown, you know, kind of how I went about my research, uh, what sort of math I did, you know, I could even generate a spreadsheet for you guys who are looking to do a project like this um, and make it a lot easier for you to figure out what sort of specifications you need in terms of torque and amperage and voltage and things like that in order to get the outcome that you desire. Um, I feel like a lot of the builds I've seen, they've just always left me wanting more. You know, I see the finished product, it's awesome. But there's always some aspect or some part of the build where I was like, man, I just really wish I knew what they were doing there. So I'm going to try and be really in-depth and also not make everything an hour long. So with that note, here we go. I'm here in the garage, and I got this 2007 Suzuki RM125 that I'm going to convert to electric. So I'll just give you a quick rundown of what I've got as far as components and what I'm thinking of doing here. So first things first, I got the motor controller over here. It's a Voltol EM150-2 controller. So it's a newer version of it than uh, maybe some other Voltol EM150s you've seen. Um, got the rear sprocket and new chain back there. Going to be putting those on soon. Uh, front sprocket is in the mail. And that is definitely one of the caveats of this project. Because the spline that this motor has cannot be found in a 520 cannot be found for a 520 chain so it's really set up for a 428 chain um, you know JT sprockets and stuff like that they have front sprockets available for this motor and for this spline but they don't have it for a 520 chain so what I'm going to actually have to end up doing is going on a lathe and cutting out the inside of this. And then when the new sprocket gets here that's for the 520 chain, I'm going to have to cut the, you know, the teeth out, I suppose. And then I will press fit them together and then weld it. And that way everything should be really nicely aligned and I'll have the 520 sprocket with you know the spline and really you know the the reason I'm doing that instead of getting a, a 428 or 420 sprocket for the rear is well one they don't make it so I'd have to modify a sprocket anyways which granted would probably be less work than doing everything I have to do with this but I figure that the added strength is probably probably a good thing considering this is going to have somewhere in the neighborhood of 120 foot-pounds of torque. So I didn't really want to go with the 428 chain. Anyways, moving on. Uh, we're going to walk inside real quick here. So here is the battery. I got this from... A company off of Alibaba, if any of you are interested, I'm, I'm happy to share the supplier. It is a 72 volt nominal, uh, 68 amp hour battery. They did a pretty sloppy job up here, but everything else is great and their customer service is really good, so definitely would highly recommend them. 
Um, these Anderson connectors seem like they're going to work out really well. I've got my charging cable all hooked up here. Um, so I'm actually going to be charging that up for the first time today. Uh, what you saw in the garage was a 3D printed version of it. That's just easier for me to mock things up with than carrying around this beast. But here's the motor. Slow down there, Vinny. This is actually a part of the build that I'm super excited about. You know, I was probably researching for this project for about two months, something like that. I'd never done anything remotely like this, so I spent a lot of time looking into, you know, the components, the battery, the motor, etc. And I finally got in contact with QS Motor, and they're like, you know, I was, I was talking to them about the V2 uh, QS138 motor. And they're like, hey, we've got this uh, this new one meant for dirt bikes and ATVs with a uh, gear reduction. And so really the big implication about this motor is that, you know, for, for, first off, for smaller wheeled bikes, like a, a pit bike size thing, you know, like a YZ8085 or whatever, it the you don't need as much gear reduction because of the smaller wheel. But this is a full-size bike. And so it needs a serious amount of gear reduction so that you get the proper amount of torque and speed rather than just all speed. Um, that might not make any sense. But anyways, it's super exciting to have this built-in reduction. Uh, it means I don't have to get any custom sprocket, even though I have to make a custom sprocket, right? But anyways, really cool motor. Really excited to share this with you guys. Um, I know Chris Uno is doing a build with this motor uh, relatively soon, and Electrobrap has some of these and might be doing a build with it soon, so hope you guys enjoy. And so behind there I've got the you know electronic throttle. Um, this guy is for programming the controller. Um, this side, I'm not going to use any of this shit. I'm not going to have a horn or, um, blinkers or any of that crap, at least not for now. It's just meant for dirt at the moment. Uh, this is kind of an owner's manual I'm throwing together. I've got all sorts of different battery info, specifications, yada, yada, yada. This was a huge pain in the ass. Um, but I think it'll be worth it. The charger can charge up to 25 amps or 3,000 watts. So, you know, I can charge this battery in under four hours with this charger, which I'm pretty excited about considering its capacity. So, yeah, I had to take pictures of all this and put it into a photo translator and make it into English. But that's done now. Um, so let's move on to what we're going to do today. Okay, well, just in case anything goes wrong here, this is the first time that I have connected this battery all the way up to the charger. I, I've never charged it before, so uh, if I die, I love you, family, and um, yeah, let's see how this goes. Got the charger set to 72 volts and 4 amps right now, just kind of doing a trickle charge for my first go. But, uh, here goes nothing. Well, that's exciting. There we are. It's charging. Awesome. Um. Makes an interesting high pitch whir. Um. Cool thing about this battery too is that the BMS is Bluetooth, so I have an application on my phone. I can check all the cell voltages. I can, you know, mess with settings for when it cuts off and you know how many, what the maximum amps are for a certain time until it shuts itself off. Blah 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 blah. So what I'm trying to do today is mount up this controller. Okay, so. I think what I'm going to have to do, and I'm not really a huge fan of having to do it, but this 
this happens to be riveted together. So like if you see that, there's, you know, maybe three or four rivets on this. Um, really I have to take it apart so that when I lay the sheet of aluminum across here, I can mark it out with the Sharpie where I'm going to need to make my cuts. And I'm going to try and cut this up as minimally as possible. Um, and I'm going to try and show you guys what I'm doing every step of the way here. And I think what I can do is I can slide the aluminum plate under here and just cut away um, what's going to be preventing the, the controller from sitting flush, which would be this. And then maybe I have to get rid of some of this plastic here because that's right in line with this little, this subframe here. So I'm gonna go ahead and figure that out and I'll be back. Well, my wrestling coaches did not call me smart stupid for no reason. Let me just uh, let me just show you how uh, Vinny's, Vinny's psyche works here. So me sitting there struggling, trying to drill out these rivets and I go, all right, screw that. You know, I get a little smart. And so I just take the subframe off, right? Well, then I'm down here and I start drilling the rivet and I just look at the thing and I'm like, you idiot. And so, of course, once you take the subframe off, which is literally three bolts, super easy, pops right out. I've never taken one of these out of a dirt bike. I've worked on and wrenched on dirt bikes for years and I've never had to take these out. Now I feel like an idiot. All right, anyways, 2.0 for my own intelligence. This sheet's way too thin. I don't know what I was thinking. It's way too thin. And on top of that, I just did a big aluminum job with my mom's boyfriend, and that's where we're getting the aluminum for the rest of this project. Um, because that battery, I am going to be uh, making an aluminum case for it. So... We're going to get, I think, like, eighth-inch rubber, surround the whole battery in that, and then encase it in aluminum. And then we're going to have to do some chopping on this frame. But, yeah, so he'll be back here this afternoon with that aluminum, hopefully, and then I can pretty much do the same thing here. But, um, yeah, I'm just clamping this and getting it lined up with this and then it starts to contour you can see the tip of my finger disappear under here so yeah when I get that sheet of aluminum I'll mark it with the sharpie or something else make my cuts so I hate to leave the video off at such an awkward point but really looking forward to continuing this build series and I've already got some more content recorded for you guys so Hopefully that's out within the next week. Uh, in the meantime, sit tight, take care of yourselves, stay Rona free. Peace out.